Hello and welcome back. We're gonna take a look at a video that I just uh, randomly searched on YouTube. I just typed in how to swim on YouTube and this video has over 6 million views and uh, it's the top search results. So as a swim coach, might as well take a look at it and see what this person has to say about swimming and uh, give you my honest feedback. I've never seen this video before, so let's watch it together step by step. Here we go. It's Christian Miller here, and in this video... Okay, I'm gonna stop right now. Okay, first of all, here's the red, red flag right now. She's not wearing a swim cap, she's not wearing goggles. Whenever someone does this, I know for sure that this person is an amateur. At the end of the day, you have to respect the pool rules, and in one of the most important rules to swimming in an indoor pool is hygiene. So you have to wear a swim cap, you have to wear goggles, and you have to shower and rinse off all of that crap and gunk and debris that you carry with you before entering the water. And this girl, you can tell that her hair is dry. So she didn't really follow the pool protocol here in terms of showering before entering the pool. So she's being very disrespectful. Who knows what hair products she has or whatever like skin products she has or makeup that she hasn't removed from her face before entering this pool. And now this is going to spread throughout the water for other swimmers to absorb. Guys, for the love of God, please be respectful towards others and to the pool that you're swimming in, particularly indoor pools. Follow the rules and shower. Put on a swim cap, guy or girl, I don't care who you are, if you don't have hair or not. It's just protocol, hygiene. Put on a swim cap, put on some goggles, okay? We'll learn how to swim. Okay, now, what this guy says, how to swim, and the video is telling me something else. When somebody says how to swim, instantly I think of somebody performing front crawl. That's like the typical, stereotypical image when it comes to swimming, you know, one arm in front of the other. In this video, this girl is putting, performing a head up breaststroke, which is kind of an advanced move if you are a beginner. So, we don't teach breaststroke in the first lesson if you're an adult or a child because the, the motion with the arms and the legs are just, they're too difficult for a beginner to grasp, okay? We need something more basic like just shoveling with our arms and just kicking with our legs, what we call flutter kick and front crawl arms. Then we can move on to more refined techniques such as what you see right now. If you have no experience in swimming and I've never been in the water before, this video will take As you can see, she's wearing like like a like a two-piece swimwear. This is not what swimmers typically wear, and I'm talking about female swimmers. Usually, if you're a serious swimmer in an indoor pool, you're going to wear a one-piece swimsuit that's meant for lap swimming. What she's wearing is not meant for lap swimming. This is more for beach attire. So if you're if you're at the beach having fun playing in the water in the sand in the summertime, yeah, this is totally cool. But when you're swimming laps, if you're serious, if you're gonna put in the work, and I'm talking about like work as in three to five sessions per week, one hour per session in the pool, doing laps, getting your exercise in, this is not the way to do it. It would be like me wearing flip-flops shorts and no shirt to the gym it's totally inappropriate attire for me to enter a gym wearing something like that or what she's wearing if you are not alone but you have someone around you who can keep an eye on you especially when you start getting into the deep end that position right there for the whip kick with the knees are way out as you can see look at that holy shit she's doing like a middle splits with her, her legs as you can see right now when you're doing a whip kick, ideally your knees should be no further than your shoulder. The outer lower leg, not the thigh, the outer lower leg is what pushes the water when we do the whip kick. And uh, yeah, she's just, her form is really bad. And if this guy is a swim coach or swim instructor, he would have pointed it out to her a long time ago or while during filming. It's also easier and more comfortable to okay. learn this. Okay, I'm assuming that this is the guy who's talking or narrating. In a pool. And as you can see, this guy is not wearing goggles or swim cap either. So that's a big no-no. Number one, floating. You should always remember that as long as you have full lungs, you are naturally floating in the water. Uh, 
that is true. Like, if you have a balloon and you fill it with air and you try to dunk it in the water, what's going to happen? It's going to float up because of that air. So, that is true. So, try this. Go to the shallow end of the pool where you can stand. Take a deep breath and curl your body up like a ball, like you see me do in the video right now. When doing this, you will feel. Uh, this is too advanced, <laughs> in my opinion. For beginners, Doing this movement, as, as you can see he's performing right now, is pretty scary. To take a step back, what I usually do with my clients is that I ask them to hold on to the, the side ledge. The water is really shallow, but we start with dunking the mouth, dunking the nose, and then once they're comfortable, dunking the eyes, dunking the head, full head, in those steps. And we do that with goggles and swim cap on. This guy's not you know, practicing what he preaches. So should you practice this stuff without goggles or swim cap? No, I would not. Why? Because, you know, when you open your eyes in pool water, it looks cool. But again, you're exposing your eyes to chlorine and other chemicals. It's very dangerous, okay? It's, it's not worth the risk. Same with like your scalp, okay? Even if you have like no hair at all, if you're a guy, you shaved your head completely, you still need to wear a swim cap. And the reason why is because you want to protect your scalp. And staying at the surface of the there. water. There. Okay. This is why we wear swim caps. Do you notice that he was flicking his hair back? Do you know how many times people do this in the pool when they're not wearing a swim cap? And what does that do? Every time. You're just, you're pulling your hair. What happens? Some of that hair falls out. That hair has nowhere to go but just to remain on the surface of the pool water. So guys, please wear a sim cap. Learn from this video. You should always know that at any point you can just yep. stop. He keeps pulling his hair back and then you notice he's, he's pushing, he's, he's touching his nose. Once you take a thorough shower, I always clean out my nostrils before I swim. This is so important because I've seen so many adults spray booger out of their nostrils like he's doing and it just stays there or it just slowly drifts into the water for you or I to accidentally swallow. Blow out your nose before you start to swim in the showers because that booger, like he's doing, yeah, it's gonna end up in the water. When you feel comfortable floating in this position, you can try to stretch out your body and float with a stretched out. Oh my God. <laughs> Stretching his arms and legs out. I would not do that. So right now he's, he's in a, like a front glide position. This is very vulnerable, actually. But the thing for him, the advantage for this guy is he's got good buoyancy. Some people are not blessed with good buoyancy, like myself, for example. I have a lot of muscle. And if I try to do that, what he's doing in the water, I would just be lopsided. Okay, I would be sinking like the Titanic. And I've said it time and time again. When you try to float, you can't expect perfection. You can't you can't expect 10 students to perform the same float perfectly or flawlessly because they all have different buoyancies, especially women. Women have really better buoyancy than men because all that fat is more distributed all around their body, especially in the thighs and the hips, okay? And that's like the middle area of the body. So it just keeps them so perfectly balanced in the water. Whereas guys, like for example, like myself, I'm really top heavy. I got a lot of muscle in the upper body. That muscle makes me sink. All right, so performing like a move like this, where I'm just stationary, sticking my arms and legs out like what he's doing, is difficult for me. I'm gonna be sinking. When you're able to do that, you have mastered the floating part. Step number- Mastered the floating part. You cannot master floating, okay? It's all based on buoyancy, all right? If I had a lot of fat around my thighs and I lost all this muscle in my upper body, yeah, I can master my buoyancy or master my floating, but what he's talking about is, yeah, bullshit. We will now learn how to kick to move forward in the water. Oh, that's not, okay. That, what he's performing is a whip kick. That is an advanced move. A lot of people will not get it the first go. It's just too complicated. It, you have to learn your ABCs. You have to crawl before you can run or walk. And the way we do it is by flutter kicking, kicking. What he's demonstrating is just too advanced and yeah, people are not going to get it and they're not going to move far and they don't understand the propulsion or the whip kick. Start with basic flutter kicks, buddy. Like in kicking and collecting again. Ah, such bad form. And again. It will take some 
Look at that. He's doing like a sumo deadlift. Like he's doing middle splits. Like that's just too wide. Again, that's not really efficient. Okay, you won't understand it. But the part here where the ankle meets the calf, that part there, that surface area, that's what propels you in the water when you're doing whip kick, not your thighs. And he's angled his legs in a position where he can't get enough leverage. Stretch your arms out forward, move them around while holding what them straight the and hell? then collecting them. You put your... <sighs> what he's doing is some sort of granny, grandma swim, grandpa swim. Okay, this is totally useless. Just like his whip kick, like a frog kick, he's doing like frog arms. Stretching your arms out like this far in your breaststroke pull is totally counterproductive. It just takes away too much energy. You're not getting enough leverage. What we do is we divide that in half. I would cut that into half, 50%. He's telling you to stretch your arms, but what he's not showing you is that, look, he's got a kickboard on his belly that's holding him up. You know how hard it is to keep a kickboard on your belly as you swim without it flying off in the distance? It's very hard. I would not recommend it. And if you're a beginner, if you're, if you're relying on that kickboard on your belly, chances are it's going to fly off. And then what are you going to hold on to? You're stuck. You, you just, what, what else? And glide forward in the water. You repeat the motion and you are now swimming. In the beginning, it will probably be most comfortable to swim with your head above water at all times. And you are now grandpa swimming, grandma swimming, okay? There's a reason why grandmas and grandpas swim like this, because they weren't educated properly. They weren't taught how to swim properly. They just developed this bad habit and they just kept passing it along and they just kept doing it. And no one had the balls or guts to point it out to them. Down in the water as you start kicking. And when you pull your arms around, they will push your upper body with your head out of the water. When swimming like this, you breathe. Uh, this guy, I, I think this video is popular because of the girl. It's definitely the girl. The girl got the views for this video. Around without touching the bottom for a while. It can also be smart to learn how to thread water and how to float on your back. How to thread water or how to tread water? Which one is it? Oh, and if you want to see more videos like this, I don't want to see any more videos like this. This is complete garbage. I would not recommend this video to any beginner swimmer. And this guy is liable for anyone he teaches or anyone who watches this video and thinks that they can learn how to swim by watching this video. <sighs> it's it's just it's so frustrating to watch something like this from an experienced swim instructor. It's just like, you know, you spent years being a doctor or years being a piano player, years being uh, like an entrepreneur. And then you see somebody like this come across and just like get millions of views on YouTube. And what they're preaching is like total bullshit. The way I would fix it, if I was him, how to swim would be, first of all, follow the standard procedures. Okay, the first step is to take a thorough shower before you enter any indoor pool. Okay, he's in an indoor pool. If you're at the beach, maybe it's different. Okay, but most indoor pools, most hotel pools, they have the same protocol. You need to take a thorough shower. Second of all, you need to wear goggles and you need to wear a swim cap. Okay, that's just proper swim attire. You need to, if you're a woman, a one piece swimsuit is best. If you're a guy, you can wear jammers, a speedo, whatever you like, but you, you have to dress for success. You know, when you go to the office, you show up in a suit. When you go to the pool, the swim laps, you show up in a one piece or you wear jammers. I've had clients that show up the first day and they don't take a shower. And I said, turn around and please take a shower. And then you can come back and enter the pool. Because they don't, they think they could just like show up with makeup and sweat and gel in their hair. And all this, this gross filth that they're going to just spread into the water for you and I to get sick from. Blowing bubbles is the foundation. He didn't really cover bubbles a lot. He's just talking about floating in a mushroom position, stretching arms out. Floating is comes a little bit later. Breathing, blowing bubbles is first, is key. The way I do it and the way I've done it so many years with, with my other clients is to blow bubbles from the mouth, blow bubbles next onto the nose, progress to the eyes into the water, and then submerge the entire head in the water while holding onto the ledge of the pool. That's how we do it. And then once they're confident from all of these levels, then they can proceed by letting go of the ledge with one arm, then the other arm, 
And then they can dunk their whole body by squatting into the shallow water. And then they can perform something like a mushroom float a bit later on after they've accomplished all of these steps. The title of this video should have been called How to Swim Head Up Breaststroke for Amateurs Like Myself. <laughs> That's what he should have called it to be more accurate. He's not a professional swim coach. So there you go. That's my honest take on this video. But let me know. I want to know what you think. Okay, leave your comments down below. And if you really want to learn, take some swimming lessons. God damn it. Sign up for my course, 7 swimco Click the link down below. Get started by now. Join our Facebook group. And you know the rest, okay? Like, subscribe, this video, and I'll talk to you next time, okay? Bye-bye!